I believe that the thought of building a self-balancing robot crosses every maker's mind at some point. And who can blame them? It's fun to watch and appears simple enough to at least attempt once. I was also bitten by the bug but wanted to give the self-balancing robot a fresh look, so decided to build its chassis to resemble the Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Let's explore something. Now to be honest, I am probably the least qualified person to talk about Thor or his hammer. I haven't even watched the movie yet, but I had heard of the hammer and imagined it to be a good candidate since it is top heavy with high moment of inertia. So I decided to give it a shot. I got the step file from GrabCAD and altered it in Fusion 360 to suit my requirements. The body consists of a hammer head at the top. It is connected to the grip through a handle. The grip and the head were split in two halves, top and bottom. The head was hollowed out from inside to make space for the electronics. The hammer uses the inverted pendulum concept to balance itself on the two wheels. The wheels are powered by a DC motor situated inside the top half of the hammer grip. The bottom half of the grip is just for aesthetics and gives a nice finishing touch to the grip. The list of parts to be 3D printed and the electronic components include the hammer head to house all the electronics. Other than the DC motor, all the electronics are stuffed in the hammer head. The bottom portion of the hammer head acts as a lid and also connects it to the handle. We need an accelerometer to measure the deviation angle which is used as an input for the control algorithm. MPU 6050 is a good choice with its low cost and reasonable accuracy. The digital motion processor inside MPU 6050 was used since it minimizes the errors inherent in its gyroscope and accelerometer sensors. A Bluetooth module to control the motion of the hammer remotely was also considered. It can also be used to get the statistics for PID tuning. But due to some of the limitations described later, this feature was not activated. We will need a microcontroller to process the information from the sensor, perform computations, and generate output for the motor. Arduino Nano was used due to its small footprint. An L298N motor driver which provides speed control through pulse width modulation and direction control through its H-bridge configuration. Now on to the assembly. The assembly consists of putting together the lower portion of the hammer or the grip and the upper portion of the hammer or the hammer head. To assemble the grip, start by inserting the half inch PVC conduit into the top portion of the grip, through the handle and into the bottom portion of the hammer head. There are two distinct benefits of using a PVC pipe. It adds a lot of strength on the slender portion of the assembly and reduces the 3D printing time. Next, insert the DC motor into the top portion of the grip. Use a pair of wire long enough to extend from the motor all the way to the hammer head. Secure the DC motor to the grip using 30 mm M3 screws. Insert shaft extension into the motor axle on both sides, then attach the wheels to the shaft extension. Use the small 3D printed tabs to attach the bottom to the top portion of the grip. This completes the assembly of the lower portion of the hammer or the grip. The next part is to assemble the head. 
Mount the L298N motor driver on the four standoffs to the electronics mounting platform using some M3 screws. Attach the MPU6050 sensor using the two holes in the center. This minimizes any offset when the hammer is in the vertical position. The microcontroller and the Bluetooth module go on the other side of the MPU6050 ensuring a relatively uniform weight distribution. Ensure that the micro USB port of Nano lines up with the opening on the side of the upper portion of the hammer head. We will need a battery holder with 6 AA batteries to provide juice to this whole contraption. Secure the battery holder to the battery mounting platform using the two standoffs. Check out the description for a link to the source code and the STL files to be printed. Adding more mass to the hammer head results in higher moment of inertia. With the given gravitational torque, it means less angular acceleration, which means it will take longer for the hammer to fall over and therefore gives a better chance for the control algorithm to calculate and apply corrections timely. Number two, I had to design a shaft coupler to extend the DC motor shaft for the wheels. Insert the switch through the designated opening in the lower portion of the hammerhead. The upper portion of the hammerhead has slots for four M3 nuts. Line up the slots and join the upper and lower portion of the hammerhead using four M3 screws. Complete the connection as per the circuit diagram in the instructions. The control algorithm used is a simple PID loop with the set point as the angle deviation from the vertical. It tries to minimize this error by adjusting the output mapped to the motor speed. Forward or backward motion can be achieved by changing the set point for the hammer to gradually incline and then get back to the upright position. I was unable to test this last part due to limited motor torque. Now on to some limitations. Since there is only one motor, the hammer can only go back and forth, that is, no turns. The inexpensive DC motor I used has limited torque. The hammer is heavy and as such creates a lot of friction. The DC motor struggles to keep up when a more drastic correction is required. The balance is fragile and even a minor external force will cause the hammer to dash in that direction. Maybe I will experiment with an optical encoder to get some sense of the speed and apply a pit control to manage the speed as well. Now comes the best part. Place the hammer on a flat surface in the vertical position, turn on the switch and enjoy. Please like, share and subscribe if you like this video and would like to see more such projects. Keep exploring and keep learning.